Welcome back. In this video, I wanted to discuss some frequently asked questions in regards to ODE 45. And I'm going to do it in the context of the same example we've been working through in our previous videos. So just to refresh your memory, previously we talked about this mass on a spring type of example. We said that a mass is attached to a spring and it has some resting length. And we're going to start it from rest at some distance from its resting position. And we'll let go and it'll oscillate back and forth. We derived these series of first order differential equations. And in our last video, we coded those up in means of an ODE function for ODE45 to use in its numerical integration. That ODE function looks something like this. As inputs, we have time represented by T and our state variable vector represented by S. And we defined some variables that we needed to use in our equations of motion and came up with the equations for S dot. One common question I get is why do we have t as an input for this ODE function? And by definition, ODE45 is looking for a function with both time as an input that we call t here and a state variable vector, which we call s. Even though we're not using time, time is a necessary input to the ODE function. It just happens that this ODE function is not time dependent, but you could imagine Perhaps that mass is changing over time. Perhaps the mass is lessening over time. Maybe it's a sandbag that's been punctured. Well then our equation of motion, specifically this mass variable here, would be dependent on time. And so that time variable would be used. But it's really important that in order for ODE45 to work, the ODE function that you hand it needs to have T in the state variable vector, which we call S here as inputs. So even though t is not used, it does need to be an input. And really, if you wanted to get rid of this warning that MATLAB is giving you here, you can make that t a tilde and it'll go away. It basically says the first input is not being used, um, but you don't have to. One of the other questions I get a lot is, honestly, what is MATLAB doing here? So in our sample script, we define a t-span, an initial condition, and then we call upon ODE45 and hand it our ODE function, this T-span in initial conditions. And I have students ask me all the time, you know, what, what's happening on the background here? The truth is, is that ODE45 is using this Runge CUDA 4.5 implementation of numerical integration. It's really similar to Euler's method, which we've discussed in previous videos. So what's happening is, is that when I run this code, MATLAB is calling ODE45 and saying, look, I have this initial condition and here's how you get the slope at any other time instance. Let's integrate across this time span. And I wanna show you what that looks like as we iterate from step to step. If you remember to one of our first videos, we did this by hand. We calculated the derivative and found an estimate for the next point of the function. So what I'm gonna do is set a breakpoint here at ODE45, and I'm going to set a breakpoint in the ODE function. So these are debugging breakpoints if you haven't used them before. It basically means the code will run until that point and then stop. And what's great about this is that we can see in our workspace the variables that have been defined up until that point. So I'm going to move this over here and open our MATLAB workspace here. And if I go ahead and run our script, You'll see in the right hand column here that the initial states are defined and the time span is defined. Now, if I hit continue, it's going to step into ODE45 and ODE45 is going to ping the spring ODE. So if I hit continue, the code is now stopped where the ODE function has been pinged. And now if you look at our workspace, the only variables that are defined here are S and T, the inputs to this function. Because these are separate functions, they have only access to what is passed between them. And you can see that we're at time zero and our state function vector s is the same as our initial conditions, two, zero. Well, if I continue, it will stop again when this is pinged again. So if I continue, you'll see now that our time has stepped ever so slightly forward in time. So we're now at some very small t and our position really hasn't changed, but our slope has changed slightly. And if I keep clicking continue and pinging this, 
you'll see that we're walking forward in time and our state vector is changing. It is using this numerical integration method to simulate forward in time and it's getting a new state variable vector and then it's calculating the slope to find the next and so on and so forth. So that's what ODE45 is doing, is that it's starting at one point and it's using something very similar to Euler's method to predict forward in time. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit this debugging and get rid of these breakpoints. Another question I get is time span. You know, right now the time span is just set to 0, 10 and MATLAB does the rest. It says, Give me a start position and an end position. I'll figure out how to make those steps in time. And I can show you what those steps in time actually look like. If I go ahead and put a hold on this figure and plot these same variables again, so time and our position, which is the first column of our S out. And if I plot them as just points rather than a line, we can visualize what those time points are. So these little red dots are the individual time points that have been evaluated. And you'll notice that there's a high density of points up near the start. And as we get towards some of these curves, they get a little bit more dense and then they're pretty sparse through these linear regions here. What MATLAB does is when you only give it a start and an endpoint, it decides how big of a step to take. And that's fine to do. It's fine to leave that up to MATLAB. It, it knows best, it does pretty well. However, sometimes when you do this, you might end up with kind of a clunky looking plot. Like it's taking steps that are too big and you don't really have the fine resolution of the plot you may want. Also, you may be doing multiple simulations and want them to be evaluated across the exact same time steps. So to resolve this, you can actually tell MATLAB explicitly what time steps or moments in time you want evaluated. So if I set T-span rather than a start and an end time, and rather a vector of time points, MATLAB will evaluate that vector of time points accordingly. So let's do a linear spacing of points from zero to 10, and let's do it with 100 points in between. So now if I go ahead and run this, rather than having that high density of points here and a sparse density of points here, we have an even spacing of points throughout. And this is really helpful if you're perhaps averaging uh, simulations or want to evaluate simulations at the same exact data points. Now, the last thing I would like to discuss is how do we pass in variables to our ODE function? So if I get rid of this, our ODE function here, notice that we require the variables K, M, and X, R. And I've defined them in our function itself. But perhaps we have a function that's changing, or maybe there's means or reasons to have those outside of the function itself and passed in via the script. Well, we can do that with a clever trick. So let's go ahead and take these variables out and let's define them here. Now, if I try running this as is, you'll see that we get an error. So I went ahead and ran it. And the following error appeared in my workspace. It says undefined function or variable k within the spring ODE function. It's because this variable is not being passed from our script to our function. So the way that we can pass it to our function is the same way that we pass any variable into a function. That's by adding another input. So I'm going to add this input parameters. And then I'm going to define a parameters vector that com is comprised of these variables k, m, and xr. And what's great about this is that now in here, I know that k is the first entry of parameters, m is the second entry of parameters, and xr is the third entry in parameters. 
So this seems to work if we tell MATLAB that we're passing in this parameters variable. And the way to do that is to use this function handle here. So we say that the inputs are T, S, and parameters, where parameters has been defined now. But we want to tell MATLAB T and S are still variables. So this function handle syntax says T and S treat as variables for this function spring ODE. And the inputs are going to be T, S, and parameters. So it basically says these first two inputs we have as variables, but parameters, which I haven't said is a variable, pass in. So now if I go ahead and run this, we get the same plot that we had before. And you might be thinking, OK, that's a clever trick, but where is this useful? I find this very useful for when we do a parameter study, where we're varying a variable uh, within an iterative loop. So take, for example, let's say that we define m as being this vector of different masses that we want to use. Well, if I set a loop that's the length of the vector m and put a hold on my plot, and I say my parameters is just defined as the ith element of m. So basically, this loop's going to go, it'll run with m equal to 1. It'll do the simulation. It'll plot it. And then it'll run again and do the simulation with m equal 2. And then again with m equal 3 and m equal 4. And I've plotted all these in succession. So I can see how does the output change as I change my mass. This is known as a parameter study. So if I go ahead and run this now, we should expect four different plots coming up. So here we have in blue our mass equal to 1, this is mass equal to 2, 3, and 4. And you can see how this response changes with respect to time given this changing mass. That's all I have planned for today, but next video we'll talk a bit about ODE event functions and how we can use them to trigger the stop of numerical integration with ODE 45. Thank you.